I'm Dr. Lori. I'm in Fairfield, Connecticut. Let's see what treasures we can find. We've got some sort of glass and some ceramics here. I'm not passing back. I'm not passing up corningware. I'm just not passing up corningware for a lot of reasons. This one's in good shape, and it's deep. The deeper ones. So this one's nice and deep. It's a little dirty, but it's not that old, not that worn. I don't think it was used that much. Uh, the mark characteristic, three bucks. They're typically like that in these Goodwills, about three dollars. You know, and this one's going to be worth about twenty-five. Um, this one is a little bit small, but it is deep. It's the one and three-quarter quart. Not all that old probably from the 19, I would say late 80s, early 90s. So again, I, I, keep, I keep all these on the shelves for you. I find something valuable, I tell you the bargains, I show you what to look for, and then I put it back so you can find it. So all these treasures are here for you. I'm not competing with you like a lot of other people. These ashtrays that are crystal, they're $3 a piece. They're nice though. They're heavy, they're decorative. Um, you can see the $3 mark. They don't look like they're chipped or cracked and there's three of them. So, you know, even if you're not a smoker, you could put these around and they really have a nice look to them. So these are heavy crystal. Look at how sharp, see how sharp they're cut on the underside. So I like those. Uh, value 10 each, but for three, so that's pretty good. So I like those. Um, here is a cruet, and that's crystal too. Very heavy, very weighty. One of the ways you can tell is because this is so heavy, the space for the bottom of the handle has to be very large. So look for a large um, base of the handle and you probably have a piece of crystal. If you can't tell by, oh, it's very heavy, or if you can't tell by, oh, it's very uh, clear to look through. This is very sharply cut. I always tell you about cut glass versus, of course, pressed glass. So if you feel like you're going to get cut, then it is cut glass. If it's smooth, it's pressed glass. So that piece they want, they want three for that. I would say value on that is definitely 12. So four times what that's worth. And I'll put that one back for you. Look for the, look for the mate. The mate is probably around here somewhere. Here are some very typical things that I see a lot of. I see a lot of the glasses that go with punch bowl sets, but no punch bowl. <laughs> because people buy the punch bowl and they use them for a, um, a centerpiece bowl on their dining room table, but they don't want the punch cups. So here are the punch cups. These are from the 1950s. See the texture? There's a flower that's a different contrasting texture from this. So that's what we're looking at here. Uh, a buck they want for these. These are only worth probably a buck without the punch bowl. So you needed to have the punch bowl with those. Here's a nice little piece. Okay? So here's a nice little piece from the 1960s. And um, this one's cute. What I like you to see is one of the styles of the 1960s, which is the two-tone overlay, the black with the gold. The black over the gold is a very typical early to mid 1960s design. You can see it on a lot of glassware. On glassware by Libby, on glassware by Mosier, on lots of famous name glassware manufacturers. So this I think is a nice little piece. How much is this? Two dollars is kind of a lot for that. I don't think it's worth more than three dollars. And remember, I know the markets because I work with the markets all the time. I'm not taking, you know, I'm not doing the phone and I have to look at the phone and figure it out. And that's fine, people want to do that, but I want you to know what to look for so you can bypass all of that. So you, your eye goes straight to the valuable stuff. So I want you to be able to do all of that. Um, this, knowing the market and knowing where you should resell it, don't always be a person who's the blind leading the blind, where you're just following somebody who happened to list something for a particular price. And they may not know what it's priced at either. So that's what I'm trying to explain to you what to look for. And these make it easy for you because it's marked that they're 25% more lead weight crystal. So they still have the mark on them. These are a taller group. A lot of people put these together and group these together. You know, you have all different candlesticks and you group these together. So that's what we're seeing here. I like these. These are probably eight inches tall. You know, so those are pretty nice. Now, interestingly enough, I would say that these two, even for their size, are worth about 50 for the pair. So they're the same as the short ones in terms of value on the retail market. This is nice. I told you, you have to look up. Look at this is beautiful. Now it needs to be clean, but it's beautiful. It's a beautiful form, right? You had a nice spout. It's got a nice heavy handle. It's obviously crystal. Um, this is, of course, for your cocktail shaker. Your barware piece is really high. Wow. They want eight for that. 
Eight is really cheap for this because you know that this piece, which is not mid-century modern, this piece dates to the 1980s, 1990s, but this piece you're easily going to see reselling for $45. So that's a great piece all the time. Why? The, the pinched spout, that's what that's called, a pinched spout. You have also a very heavy handle. The handle has a weight to it that you could see three-dimensional weight to it. It looks like there's these striations where everything's falling downward, right? Sort of um, like a cascading flow of this. It's tall, so it's gonna hold a lot. It probably had a stick, right, a stirrer stick. It's not here now, but I don't care. That's a beautiful piece, like 45 bucks on the retail market for eight. You get a flower, you get some flowers from the florist and they give you a little piece of glass vase and then over the years you hold on to it until later and then you just, Donate it to Goodwill. If you see these, I don't know if you're seeing what I'm trying to get at. Here's your group. This is, new, this is plastic, not even glass. These are really nice, look at that. That nice etched holiday look with the garlands. Um, these are nice little parfait glasses and it looks like there's five, there might be a sixth one somewhere. The etched pattern is more for the holidays and two dollars a piece, I would say they're probably worth five dollars a piece. So you're gonna double your money on those. There's a Waterford crystal ice bucket. And crystal is weighty and it's clear. And sometimes you get an etched decoration as well. It does not look broken. You know, it doesn't look damaged anywhere. It's pretty heavy to hold. It has a repeating pattern around the etched part as well as here, up and down these little spikes at the bottom. One of the things I told you to look for is look for this starburst at the bottom, the underside. But that's a nice, really nice piece. And you'd put your bottle of wine or your bottle of champagne or whatever, your ice bucket you, to cool. It's a cooling piece. So what do they want for this? They want 12. 12 is, 12 is very good for this piece because this piece is worth 70. Unfortunately, the mark has worn away over time. So you have to start to learn by the patterns. Um, now, I've looked at a lot of things for a long time, so, but learning by the patterns of which manufacturer is making this and when they're making it. Put this one back because I leave them all for you. So you can find these sparkles. That's why people follow me and come to see what I'm looking at when we're taping. Oh, milk bottles. So a lot of you ask me about milk bottles. Milk bottles depend on a lot of different things. Shape of the bottle is going to be important. A lot of people collect them. They're big for collectability. Um, the name, like in this in Connecticut, it would be Seal Test. A lot of people would be looking for old seal test bottles. Um, so the name of the, of the actual manufacturer, look at the way that the cap would go on. So some of them had those foil caps. So that will matter and that will help you identify age because those are usually older than those screw on tech caps for the milk bottles. So this milk bottle is probably like, oh, $2 for this milk bottle. That's kind of a lot. But they figure probably that the collectors want it so they want to price it a little higher. It's probably only worth three dollars for this particular one but some of them can wor be worth a lot more depending on if you're a collector and how old the bottle is and what kind of condition the bottle's in and the label itself the lettering has to be in good shape too for it to be valuable so that one's not all that ex all that valuable and expensive but a lot of people just say oh i remember this from you know i live near that dairy or we used to drink that milk or whatever it might be and then you, you'd see that for the milk bottles. But sometimes they're good to pick up. In this particular case, I'd leave it. I left the real bargains there for you. There's more to come.